with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to celebrate the wonder that is vegetables. A lot of people have been writing and asking for more vegetable recipes. A lot of you are vegetarians and don't eat meat, and a lot of you just want more side dishes. And I find that as the season goes on, the gardens come in, the farmer's markets open, I want more vegetables. I lessen the amount of meat that I eat, and I eat lots more vegetables and produce that you can find in the farmer's market. I went to the farmer's market the other day, and oh, I just walked through there, and it was just, we have a glorious farmer's market here in Abingdon, and I just love to go and look at the different growers and the different produce and things that they bring. And I want you to look at how pretty this basket of vegetables are. Now, I look at that and I think that is truly a meal contained right there. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make, out of this beautiful squash, the yellow squash, we're gonna make a squash casserole or gratin or whatever you wanna call it. I call it squash casserole. It's simply delicious. You could also use zucchini in this recipe if you wanted to. We're gonna take these gorgeous peppers. Look at these beautiful colors of peppers. We're gonna take the peppers, we're gonna roast them, and we're gonna make a bruschetta with the roasted red pepper and garlic over top of it with some cream cheese. Absolutely fantastic. We're gonna start our meal with that. And alongside that, we've got these gorgeous tomatoes, these vine ripened tomatoes, and we are gonna make an orzo stuffed tomato with some feta cheese and some basil and things that I picked from my garden this morning. Here's my little herbs that I went out this morning early and uh, picked my, from my herb garden. I grow my own herbs at home because I just use them all the time in the summer. That one's looking a little wilty, but he needs some water. But these are just some beautiful basil that smells fabulous, some rosemary, and some um, Italian parsley, flat leaf parsley, which is what I like. So we're gonna get started with our squash casserole first because that needs to bake about 30 minutes. You wanna preheat your oven to about 350 degrees. And let's just pick out our wonderful squash here. You need a couple of pounds. I'm just gonna use this bowl here. Hang on just a second. You need about two pounds of squash. I am using yellow squash today, but if you wanna use zucchini, use zucchini. If you wanna use a combination, use a combination. And I've just got some gorgeous yellow squash. Now I'm gonna cut this bulbous part, the fat part down here at the bottom, to where I'm making little half moon shapes here. You just wanna slice it about a quarter of an inch thick. I also have a pot of water here on the stove, a small pot of water that I've brought to a boil, and that's for my orzo. Let me get this skillet preheating here for the squash. Use a large skillet and get that preheating while you're slicing. Let's go ahead and drop our orzo in. I've got some water here that I've brought to a boil. Always, always salt your water before you cook pasta. It does truly make a difference in the dish, And but don't add your water, you've heard me say this before, don't add your water till your, or your salt until your water is at a rolling boil, otherwise it will truly pit the bottom of your pots and pans, the scar, the bottom of your pots and pans. I have about half a cup or so of orzo. If you've never seen orzo, let me show you here. Orzo is not rice. It is a pasta like macaroni or spaghetti, that kind of thing, but it is shaped like little tiny little grains of rice. One of my favorite shapes of pasta. So versatile. You can just you make so many different things out of it. It's simply wonderful. Just cooked. Takes about six minutes or so. Um, cook it and dress it with lemon juice. But that's another show. Today we're going to use it to stuff our tomatoes. So we've got our skillet here. Let me get that out of my way. Preheating. I want to add a couple of tablespoons of oil. You could use canola oil, vegetable oil, or olive oil, whatever you want to use couple of tablespoons full. And then as my, uh, as I slice the squash, I'm just gonna drop it in here. You just wanna saute the squash briefly. My skillet's not quite hot enough, but that's okay. I love vegetables. I eat a ton of different kinds of vegetables. I love to go 
like I shared with you earlier. And I want to encourage you wherever you're watching me from, farmers markets are really truly making a huge comeback and they're popping up everywhere. And if you have a local farmer's market, support your local growers. Go to the farmer's market and see what they have. You would be amazed at the different varieties of everyday things that you cook, but you didn't know there were 10 different kinds of eggplant or, you know, um, you know, so many different kinds of peppers and green beans and tomatoes and just all kinds of stuff. And a lot of times your farmer's markets will have those different varieties of produce that you may not have ever tried. And that's a great way to introduce your kids. I love to take my boys to the farmer's market. My particular one is open on Saturday mornings and Tuesday nights. And uh, we like to go in the height of produce season and just walk and see the different vegetables that are there, the different kinds of herbs and different, just all kinds of stuff. And that's a great way for the children to be involved in cooking and in choosing their own food. And I find with my boys, if I let them pick something, they will at least try it. Now, they may not like it, but they will at least taste it if they have helped pick it out or and or helped me to cook it. I find that they eat better. They will try different things, try a more variety of things. And you never know until you try. You never know what something tastes like until you try it. You may not like it. You may like it. And maybe if you find something at your farmer's market or your produce, wherever you buy your produce, and you don't quite know how to fix it, email me and let me know what it is that you have, and I'll see if I can't help you. And if I can't, I'll find out how. Because I do love to try new things. One of my favorite things to do is to just be by myself because I can wander when I'm by myself. And I love to go to the grocery store and just wander slowly if I have the time, wander slowly through the aisles and see what's different, see what I've never cooked, see what new spices in the, the, the spice section or what is new in the produce section or whatever, and I love to try new things. And that's a great way to experiment. A lot of you have written and said, you know, I just don't know how to cook. Well, get in the kitchen and try. It's only food. It's not rocket science. You know, I don't want to be wasteful, but hey, if you try something, maybe it doesn't taste good, at least you've tried and you've learned something in the process. And that's one of the goals of this program. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to my squash and some freshly cracked pepper. Oh. I love, this is one of my favorite little things to grow is squash. My mom has a garden at her house and my boys love to go and, and help in the garden. And that's a great way to get your kids involved too. If you have a little bit of lamb, even if you don't, have pots. I have little pots at home that we grow our herbs and things in. I need to show you that. I need to get my producer to come out and get a picture of my little herb garden and show it to you sitting right on my deck and I can go out there and pick what I want. Now, to our squash, we're gonna add an onion. I'm gonna take a quick break. All I'm gonna do is chop up this onion. This is just one medium. I'm using a Vidalia onion because they're in season and I love them. If you don't have Vidalia, just use whatever you can find. One medium sized onion, just slice it thin and put it in with your squash. I'm gonna take a quick break and when I come back, we're gonna get this casserole in the oven and I'm gonna show you how to stuff those tomatoes. We'll be right back in just a minute. Timothy chapter 2 verse 13 says, if we are not faithful, he will still be faithful because he cannot be false to himself. You know, God is faithful. Our moods change, but God's doesn't. Our minds change, but God's doesn't. And even when we do wrong and we, we do what we know to be something against our heavenly father, you know what? He doesn't change and he remains faithful to us. 
God is faithful in all things. Ask yourself, are you being faithful to Him? Are you faithful in the big things? Are you faithful in the small things? We need to remember to stay on the path and the, the example that Christ has set before us and remain faithful in all things unto our Lord. sauteing, we're going to get our peppers in the oven to roast for our bruschetta. I have a beautiful selection of different peppers here. I chose just the multicolored ones. You use what you like. I simply adore roasted peppers. I will buy them when they're reasonably priced. T listen, just cut your pepper in half, take out the seams, take your hand, go like that, squash it, put it on a pan, that easy. Um, I buy peppers, or we grow a, a lot of peppers in the garden, but, and then when they're, you know, fairly reasonably priced, I roast them. And I, when I'm grilling something, I put peppers on the, up, in the, on the grill. And you can absolutely do this on the grill if you're grilling something. If I am not grilling, I do what I'm doing right here, and I just put them in the oven at about, I don't know, 4, 450, 475, something like that and just let them cook until the peppers, literally the skins are black. Then I remove the peppers or the skin and we'll, we'll do that in just a few minutes. And the flavor changes and it becomes this incredible, sweet, juicy roasted pepper. They are absolutely fantastic in salads, on bread like we're gonna do today. They make delicious accompaniments on a sandwich. Just keep them in your refrigerator. Cover them with just a, a little drizzle of olive oil. Keep them in your refrigerator. And when you're ready to make a sandwich, just add some red roasted peppers to it, whatever color you like. And uh, they're just delicious. They're absolutely fantastic. So I do this quite often and keep them in my refrigerator. And I like them as a snack. They're great chopped up and put over pasta. I would so take that orzo, drain it, chop these roasted red peppers and put that with a little lemon juice and have a meal, have a light lunch. It would be fantastic. So there's just so many things that you can do with peppers. And they are so healthy and so good for you. One red pepper, one of those red peppers that we just cut up is so loaded with lycopene and antioxidants and so forth. And it's just one of the healthiest things that you can eat. You know, the Lord truly did give us Visually, I say it all the time, you eat with your eyes first. And look at the colors of the rainbow. And if you want a healthy diet, now I'm not a nutritionist, never studied nutrition. I took one nutrition class when I was in college. But I'm here to tell you, if you just eat the rainbow, so to speak, and eat a variety of different colors of fruits and vegetables, you're good to go. So d put nothing on them, just like that. And let's put them in the oven. 475-ish, something like that. Put them in there. Let them roast for about 10 minutes or so. The skins will be black and blistered. Delicious. So, let's check our squash. It's sauteing up beautifully. The orzo is done. Let's get that out in a bowl to drain. Let me get my little strainer here. Orzo is delicious. Now look at how much that plumps up. It's amazing at how much that just plumps like crazy. You want to take your orzo out and let it cool because you we're going to mix it with some other ingredients and we're going to let it cool and add it with some feta cheese. If you don't like feta, you can use whatever kind of cheese you like. I happen to adore feta cheese. So that's what I cook with. But if you don't like feta, you could use any kind of cubed up cheese that you do like, whatever kind of cheese you like. We'll work in this recipe. If you like goat cheese, it would be great with goat cheese or anything, whatever kind of cheese you like. Just put that in here and we're gonna let this kind of cool. I think we about got it all. We're just gonna let that drain and cool for just a few minutes and then we'll get our tomatoes ready to go. Now, 
For the squash casserole, we need some bread cubes, not bread crumbs, bread cubes. About, for that much squash, that's about two pounds of squash. Depending on the thickness of your bread, I'm gonna do probably about eight slices of bread. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm using a good quality white, thicker cut white sandwich bread because that's what I like in this recipe. I don't normally eat white bread, to be honest with you. I really do like whole wheat bread. But for this recipe, I think whole wheat bread is just a little bit um, dense. Cut the crusts off and cut your bread crumbs or your bread into cubes. And there you go, instant little bread cubes. If you have a little bit of a leftover French baguette or Italian loaf bread or whatever kind of bread you have in your house, use that, at, you know, whatever you like. If you have some leftover, use your leftovers. A lot of times what I do is I will freeze bread that maybe we're not gonna get enough of it eaten like the remainder of that loaf. And I stick that in the freezer and then pull out however many slices I need for recipes such as this. So that's a great way to save your bread. Here are my squash, so let's... You don't wanna cook this to death. I don't like my squash um, mushy. I, I, I really just don't. I like it to have a little bit of texture. And we're gonna bake this for 30 minutes. So, that for me is done enough. If you like yours a little more done, then by all means cook yours a little more. We're gonna add our bread. Go ahead and turn that off if you want to. Add your bread straight to your skillet. In a bowl, let me get rid of my crumbs here. We're gonna add about half a cup of half and half. I'm using half and half. You could use milk. You could use um, uh, heavy cream, whatever you want. Milk, 2%, whatever. I'm using half and half because that's what I had today. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper, one egg, a little bit of, of um, sage or oregano, just some kind of good potent herb. I've got about a tablespoon of sage, about a tablespoon of thyme. By all means, you could use fresh if you wanted. I find in long baking dishes that the dried herbs do a little better. I have a tablespoon of brown sugar. If you don't have any brown sugar, you could use white granulated sugar would work. Anything you want, doesn't matter. Beat that together. And let's see, then about half a cup of grated cheddar cheese to this mixture. We're gonna get our casserole dish right here. Just a, about a quart, quart and a half size, whatever you have is fine. Stir your squash and your breadcrumbs together. We're gonna combine this with that, with the egg mixture, and then pour that in this dish. Mm. The breadcrumb just acts as a binder the bread acts as like a binder to get it um, thoroughly and totally combined. You want to add your squash to your cream mixture. Okay, mix all that together. There's one piece here. Mix all this together. Mm. So good. And we're gonna put this in our dish. I think I didn't mix up the cheese. That's okay, because we'll top it with more cheese, so it's no problem. Spread it out evenly. Top it with the rest of this cheese. This is about two cups total. Some more cheddar cheese. Then we're gonna shred about half a cup of fresh Parmesan cheese. Put that on top of the cheddar, put this in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. 
and then it's ready to eat. I gotta take a quick break. I'm just gonna shred and get this in the oven, and when I come back, we're gonna finish the tomatoes and make the bruschetta. I'll be right back in just a minute. Generosity, pass it on. Strike one. I'm the greatest hitter in the world! Strike two. I'm the greatest hitter in the world! Strike three. Wow. I'm the greatest pitcher in the world! Yes. Optimism. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Our casserole is in the oven. Our uh, peppers are almost done. I'm smelling them. Now, let's start our tomatoes. Remember, we cooked our orzo and we drained it. We put it in this bowl. All I did was add about a teaspoon of olive oil to let it not clump together. That's all I've done. I have the juice of one lemon and the zest of the same lemon that I'm adding to the orzo. And I've got my beautiful fresh basil. I'm just gonna kinda chop it. Mm, I love the smell of basil. I love basil. Such a summertime treat. I grow lots of it at home. Add about half that. That's about, I don't know, half a, maybe a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna add about half of that. I'm gonna save the rest for the top. One sprig of rosemary, because this is a kind of a fat sprig, and let me tell you, rosemary can be potent, but oh, it smells so good. This is probably, if I had to pick a favorite herb to cook with, it would be rosemary. I use a ton of it in so many things. It goes with everything. It goes with meats, it goes with vegetables, it even goes in breads and on pizza dough. One of my favorite things to make is um, take a store-bought pizza, in the dairy department, in the roll, flatten it out and put it on a pan, put a little olive oil, a little sliced mozzarella, a little fresh basil, I mean uh, rosemary, and mm, bake it delicious. That's a, probably about a tablespoon of fresh rosemary. If you do not have fresh rosemary, rosemary is one of those herbs that really does um, dry well, so you could use the dried rosemary would be fine. Feta crumbles, like I said, you use whatever kind of cheese you like. I happen to adore feta. About half a cup or so of good feta crumbles. Get it really in the grocery stores now, really inexpensively. Feta is salty, so you really don't need to add any extra salt to your dish. Now, I have some tomatoes, and what I did was cut the top off of them and take a spoon and just get the inside, just clean them out. That's all I did, was just cut off the top and take a spoon and just got rid of the pulp, discard the pulp or use it for something else. You don't need that in this dish. Place them in a baking dish and I'm going to stuff them with this mixture, 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes until the tomatoes are good and soft. The tomato shell itself is good and soft. Oh, smells so good. I love stuffed tomatoes. You can, that's the perfect little cooking utensil, <laughs> if you will, the little cooking bowl. I did, I'll show you on this one, take a little teeny tiny sliver off the bottom just so they would sit flat, but don't cut through to where you have a hole. Make sure you do not cut through the tomato, just enough so it sits flat in your dish. Stuff these. 350 degrees or so for about 10 minutes till the tomatoes soften and the feta kind of melts a little bit in there. Absolutely delicious. Fresh cracked pepper on top. In the oven they go for about 10 minutes. Now, our tomatoes came out of the oven and we just drizzled them with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil before we baked them. I forgot to tell you that. And then when they came out, 
we just put the remaining chopped basil on there. They baked for about 10 minutes. Here is our squash casserole. Uh, it's been cooling now, and all I did was add some fresh chopped flat leaf parsley on top. Over the break, I took a baguette of bread, you know, the long bread that you get at the grocery store, cut it in about one inch pieces, and laid it on a baking sheet and roasted it, just browned it on both sides for about, you know, three to five minutes under the broiler and let it cool. That's all that is, it's just bread, nothing on it. Our uh, peppers are done. Now, I've already got them done, but I wanted to show you what to do. This is what you wanna look for when your peppers come out. You see the little bit of black on there and it can even get even blacker. That's what you wanna see. Look how easy this is, just take it and peel the skin off. That's all you need to do is peel the skin off of the pepper. That's it. Easy, easy, easy. Then take your pepper and cut it into strips, however big or small you like. The rest of them I've already done and got them in here. I took about two tablespoons of olive oil, put one clove of garlic that I chopped and put, just heated it in the oil for about 30 seconds. That's all this is. I'm gonna pour that over the peppers. That's been cooling. I'm gonna stir that up so that all of those peppers are coated with that wonderful, wonderful oil. I'm gonna add just a touch of salt to the peppers. Stir that up. That's a side dish to me, but we're gonna turn it into the bruschetta. Now, some whipped cream cheese, all this is, spread it on there. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. I get so excited about food. <laughs> then take your wonderful little peppers and place them on there. Put one of each color to make it very pretty. And then take, if you have some fresh basil, if you don't have fresh basil, do not use the dried basil. It is not the same flavor. You can either add a whole leaf on there or little shreds, whichever you want to do. And then just put that over top of your bread. And there's you a beautiful little crostini that we can serve. This